Good morning, Hampton Avenue Church of Christ family, friends, and visitors, and welcome to the Hampton Avenue Church of Christ live streaming service today. We are so glad that you have decided to praise and glorify the Lord with us today. We also have some announcements to be made, and I want to read these cards in its entirety. Uh, the kindness of others is a genuine reflection of the kindness of God. Hampton, you're the real MVPs, the way you came through for me. Thank you. May you receive abundant blessings in return for the special way you express your love. May God bless you all. Love, <clears throat> excuse me, Sister Santasha, Sister Raven, and Brother Jaden. We also have a card that I want to read from Brother Chris Davis. Your kindness made a difference, and your thoughtfulness touched my heart. Thank you. Thank you for your prayers, calls, and well wishes, Brother Chris Davis. Amen. And the last card, thank you for your expression of sympathy. Thank you for your kindness, support, and comforting words. We gratefully appreciate the cards, flowers, and kind expressions of sympathy during this difficult time. And it's from John H. William and Families. Our other announcements, we want to pray for the Mutri family for traveling grace for our, the, our, their, our Mutri family son or grandson, what have you. Son, Austin is graduating. He will be receiving his master's from Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt University in leadership. So we want to keep the Mutri family in our prayers and congratulations to you, Brother Austin. We also want to keep Sister Baylor in our prayers. You know, uh, she's still been dealing with her uh, illnesses, and uh, we pray, and we know that we serve a God that can do something about her situation. So let's keep Sister Baylor in our prayers and her family as well, as well as Brother Hanyard. Uh, keep him in our prayers, and uh, right now he's recovering from rehab, so let's ask God for a speedy recovery in our that rehab adventure that he's enduring right now. So keep the Hanyard family as well in your prayers. We also want to pray for Brother Jackson Ross, whose health has started to de deteriorate a little bit, but we know God is able. So let's keep Brother Jackson Ross in our prayers as well. We also want to pray for Woody Ferris, Brother Ferris' brother, who's back in the hospital, praying for a speedy recovery in his aspects as well. So we know that uh, when we pray, and we pray in faith, that God is able. So we just want to keep uh, Brother Woody Ferris in our prayers. We also want to pray for Brother Brown's niece, Delilah, uh, Delia Edwards, for her up-and-coming surgery tomorrow. You know, she's been fighting a tough battle, but God has been with her, and we've been behind her in prayer. So we ask our Heavenly Father to continue to do his good work in her, and we pray that all goes well according to God's will for her young life, and we know that God is able. We also want to pray also for little Peyton and his battle with cancer. Only six years old. Her battle, I'm sorry. Praying for little Peyton. Her battle with cancer, only six years old. Man, you know, we, we look at that, and, but we serve a God that is able to do something about anybody's situation, but in particular, Peyton's situation here. So we're asking God to step in and show out, as he always does when it's according to his will for each and every one of our lives. We also want to pray for Brother Timothy, our uh, brother Emmanuel, keeping the uh, Timothy family in our prayers as well. We also want to reach out and pray for the community outreach on the Brother Brown's leadership. It's still accepting clothes for the homeless and school-aged children, as well as school material is also needed. So we appreciate all that you do, and Brother Brown will uh, basically uh, touch base with you individually if necessary. We also want to pray for the men's retreat. That's under the leadership of Brother Driver and myself. The $50 non-defundable deposit is due June 20th, 21. 
So all are encouraged, all men are encouraged to come out. And if you have any questions, contact Brother Driver or Brother Stevens. We appreciate it. And we also want to are praying for all the sick and all those who are going through bereavement and anything else that you may be going through or dealing with because we know we serve a God that is able. And we're praying for a safe return for all our congregation members, visitors, and friends on September the 5th is our projected date, September the 5th, 2021, for our return to full service. May God bless you all, and I hope and pray you enjoy the service. And remember to like, share, and subscribe. God bless you as Brother Chris leads us in songs. Praise God. Some glad morning when this life is over. I'll fly away, fly away. To our home on God's celestial shores, I'll, I'll fly away, fly away. Oh, I'll, I'll fly away, oh, fly away, oh glory. I'll, I'll fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah, by and by, oh, I'll, I'll fly away, oh, I'll, I'll fly away, oh, glory, I'll, I'll fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah, by and by, oh, I'll, I'll fly away. Amen. Don't you want to put on those two wings and fly? Amen. 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 Just to see his face. Just to see his face. Turn with me to number 535. Number 535, the Glory Land Way. Those who are in the building. Number 535 in the Great Book, The Glory Land Way. <clears throat> Shall we? I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. I'm in the glory land way. Telling the world that Jesus saves today. Yes, I'm in the glory land way. Oh, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is nearer and the way grow is clearer for I'm in the glory land way. Listen to the call, the gospel call today. Get in the glory land way. Wanderers, come home, oh, hasten to obey. Yes, I'm in the glory land way. Oh, I'm in the glory land way. Well, I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is nearer and the way grow is clearer for I'm in the glory land way. Onward I go, rejoicing in his love. I'm in the glory land way. Soon I shall see him in the home above. Oh, I'm in the glory land way. Oh, I'm in. The glory, land way. glory land way. Well, I'm in the glory land way. Glory land way. Heaven
heaven is nearer and the way grow is clearer for I'm in glory land way. All right. <clears throat> now it's time to turn our thoughts to the cross. Those who have a book and they're in the audience, please turn to number 382. Number 382. After singing up this first verse of this song, we'll have the brothers come before us with the Lord's Supper, collection, scripture, and prayer. Number 382. <clears throat> Why did my Savior come to earth and to the humble go? Why did he choose the lowly bird? Because he loved me so. He loved, he loved me so. He loved, he loved me so. He gave his precious life for me, for me. Because he loved me so. Amen. Amen. We come to this part of our worship service, and that is communing with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In observing the Lord's Supper, we as Christians are to keep in memory our Lord as he sacrificed himself on the cross. We think of his great love. We think about his great love, his sacrifice, and his forgiveness. We commune not only with him, but with all those who are his. We share a savior who suffered and died for the salvation of all mankind. We are to truly reminded of what is important. For this time, our disagreements, distractions, and our egos and worldly enticements are set aside. There is to be no recognition of the rich or the poor, black or white, male or female. Every thought should be on him and his sacrifice. For some perspective on, a, on his sacrifice, I'll be re, re, reading from, uh, and how we partake of the Lord's Supper, I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 through 29. For I received of the Lord that which also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken from you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of their bread and drink of their cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the sacrificial gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Dear Lord, as we partake in this communion, we pray that we remember his sacrifice, his body that was bruised and broken for us, and the blood, the fruit of the vine, which represents the blood which was shed for us. Dear Lord, we ask that we do this with a heart made clean by the blood shed for us. And it's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. So we can now partake of the Lord's Supper.
Now we come to the part of our worship service, and that is giving. In supporting the work of the church, scripture teaches us that each Christian should give according as he has purposed or determined in his heart. This requires planning on our part. Our giving is not to be done randomly. We are to purpose in our heart and to plan accordingly. I'll be reading from uh, 2 Corinthians, verses 6 and 7. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. As the scripture says, we must purpose in our heart to give. Giving should be done not randomly, without thought. It's not a matter be, to be taken lightly. We're to give as God has prospered us. We know we cannot outgive, his, outgive God because he gave his son. That's the greatest gift of all. But we must give as he has prospered us, not grudgingly, not of necessity, but cheerfully. So let us pray for the giving. Dear Lord, we thank you for this, the sacrifice and giving that has been taken up. Dear Lord, we thank that we use these, use these monies that have been collected for the uplifting of your kingdom. Dear Lord, we ask you to bless those who are able to give at this time and those who are not able to give at this time so that at the next appointed time we all may be given be able to give more as we have prospered. Dear Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for his great sacrifice. And it's in his name that we pray. Let us all say, amen. Amen. Good morning. The scripture today will be taken from the book of Jonah. Book of Jonah. Chapter 3. Verses 1 through 5. And I'll be reading from the NIV version. Jonah. Jonah. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, and the word, of, word of God reads, Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nin Nineveh and proclaim it, and, excuse me, and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now, Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. I've just read to you from the book of Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Now will you please rise as we are led in a word of prayer. Amen. Please pray along with me. Heavenly Father, once again, we are so thankful once again for this opportunity that you've allowed us to come together to study another portion of your holy divine word and also to hear from your manservant brother, Brother Hanyard. We're mindful, Heavenly Father, that you have blessed us so richly here in, in this city. We're not fearful of the violence that we hear about that is traveling all over the world. We don't have to deal with um, the weather. We're very blessed, dear God. So we're Thanking you, dear Heavenly Father, for all the blessings you granted unto us here. But we're asking, dear Heavenly Father, that you would be with those who are going through much devastation. 
all over the world. We're all your people, dear God. So we're petitioning you to be with those that are fighting. We're praying, dear God, that you will bring the leaders to a table of peace. We're so thankful, dear Heavenly Father, that you've shown mercy into us in this United States that we now have uh, the coronavirus on the run. But we know, dear Heavenly Father, it's because of you. And we know, dear Heavenly Father, if we continue to worship and give you praise, you will continue to be with us. And we ask, dear Heavenly Father, that you will give us the, the mindset to go forth and do those things that will be pleasing in your eyesight. Allow us to be instruments of yours to help those who we come in contact with. We're so thankful, dear Heavenly Father, for your son Jesus giving unto us the, the way that we can be with you for eternity. We're thankful that you have blessed us with such great love. And we need, dear Heavenly Father, to show that by showing love to one another. We're mindful, dear Heavenly Father, of all the things that are happening. But we are most of all so thankful for you loving us. We're thankful for Brother Phil, dear Heavenly Father, that you will be with him to allow him to bring back the memories and things he has studied. Not just for us to hear it, but to receive it and to take it into our lives and better prepare ourselves for your service. Dear Heavenly Father, dear Heavenly Father, we are so mindful of the blessings that we have. And we ask him that you will be with the sick, the shed in, those who are less fortunate, those who are in trouble in marriage, those who are dealing with issues that they have no control over. Give them the strength, dear God, to endure because you are the only one that we can turn to. We love you, dear God, and we're so thankful for your love to us. In your son's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Page 10 in our soft books, Camping Towards Canaan Land. Page 10. I'll have it. Let us sing. I will leave this land of bondage with its earthly treasure. I'll journey to a place where there is love on every hand. I'll exchange a land of heartache for the land of pleasure. I'm camping, I'm camping towards Canaan's happy land. Don't you know that every day I'm camping towards the land of Canaan? And with rapture, I'll survey its wondrous beauty grand. Glory, hallelujah. Find the land of promise. I'm camping, I'm camping towards Canaan's happy land. Out of Egypt, I will travel through the darkness dreariest. Far over hills and valleys and across the desert sand. But I'll end up safe at home where I should not grow weary. I'm camping, I'm camping towards Canaan's happy land. Don't you know that every day I'm camping? Towards the land of Canaan, and with rapture I'll survey its wondrous beauty grand. Glory, hallelujah, find the land of promise. I'm camping, I'm camping towards Canaan's happy land. Yes, I reach the land of promise with its scenes of glory. My journey ending in a place so lovely and so grand. I'll be led by Jesus to that blessed land of story. I'm camping, I'm camping 
towards Canaan's happy land. Don't you know that every day I'm camping towards the land of Canaan? And with rapture, I'll survey his wondrous beauty grand. Glory, hallelujah. Find the land of promise. I'm camping, I'm camping towards Canaan's happy land. Don't you know that every day I'm camping, camping towards the land of Canaan? And with rapture, I'll survey his wondrous beauty grand. Glory, hallelujah, find the land of promise. I'm camping, I'm camping towards Canaan's happy land. Amen, amen, amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. If you are viewing with us today, if you're here today, you need to be praising God today. Because you recognize and you realize that it wasn't you that woke you up. You recognize and realize that you have life in your body and it wasn't you that gave you that life. You recognize and you realize that you woke up in a place that was safe from hurt, harm, and danger. You recognize and you realize that you still have some food to eat today. You recognize and you realize because of today, you still have another opportunity to get it right with the Lord. God is a mighty good God. God is a mighty awesome God, and he's worthy to be praised. We're so thankful that you're viewing with us in the cyber sanctuary, and we're so thankful knowing that you could have been anywhere viewing any church uh, service today, but you decided to be here with us, and we are blessed by your presence. And of course, we're so thankful for those who have come to lead us in service, these uh, leaders, these men of God that have come and uh, uh, blessed us so that we could have a continuous service. We're so thankful for each and every one and, and those that are in the audience. We're so thankful for their presence here. We want to definitely uh, keep in mind all of those that Brother Stevens mentioned uh, in the opening there, we want to definitely keep all of those who have lost loved ones. We're still praying for Sister Santasha as she uh, just buried her father. Uh, we're mindful of all of those that are going through procedures. And we're still praying for Sister Langford and uh, her husband that stands by her side for strength. Uh, we're praying uh, for all those that are in the hospital. Uh, we know that Sister Baylor is still there. My father's getting rehabbed, and so we're praying for everybody. Amen. Everybody uh, needs our prayer. Uh, all those that are battling cancer, we know about that fight. We know that God is able. Yes. God is able, and, and just keep your faith in God, and we're praying for you. Just know we're praying for you, and we pray that you're praying for us as well. Yes. Um, Today, we uh, want to come from the scripture that was uh, selected, that was read uh, by Brother Brown, and we're thankful for him and his presence. Uh, coming from Jonah, chapter 3. Jonah, uh, chapter 3. And we're going to be concerned today with verses 1 uh, through 5. 1 through 5. And hopefully you can uh, see it there on your screen for those who are viewing in the cyber sanctuary. Um, but uh, we definitely want you to uh, look at scripture with us. Just don't take my word for anything today. Amen. And the word of God reads, and the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. Y'all see the second time? Oh, yeah. Saying, arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh. According to the word of the Lord. Now, Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth. From the greatest of them, even 
to the least of them. If that's in your Bibles or if that's on the screen, go ahead and say amen. 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 The title for today's lesson simply is the God of second chances. The God of second chances. Now, even before I get into the lesson, you know for yourself that God is a God of second chances. You don't need to hear about anybody else's story. You don't even need to read the Bible. You can just remember in your own history, in your own mind, where God has brought you from to where God has brought you to. And you know that God is a God of second chances. And so we're thankful to have this lesson today. And I pray and I pray that all of our studies thus far this year in regards to theology, that is to say the nature of God has been fruitful for you and enlightening and encouraging uh, for those of you who are watching as well as those who are in the audience today. But I'm convinced that everybody that believes in God don't know about the various facets of his nature. And so it is that I believe that we need to continue to teach about the nature of God. You do know that one day we will see God face to face. And what if we see God and, 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 and we don't know anything really about God because we haven't studied his word? It'll be just like meeting a stranger Amen. for the first time. Y'all see this? And so we want to learn all that we can about God, about his nature. And why is that? Because it helps equip us in how God can help us while we're here in this life. Amen. Amen. And then it'll make us more appreciative about what he does for us. Today, this lesson uh, really deals with a person uh, who, by all accounts, many would say is unworthy of God's mercy and grace. But God gave it to him anyway. This lesson is dealing with a person who, who disobeyed God, messed up. But God gave him a second chance. This lesson is for all those who find themselves at a distance from God because they are running from God. And that may sound familiar to some of you because some of you still have your running shoes on. But God wants us to know that we can come to him. Why? Because he is a God of second chances. Five points I want to illustrate today. Point number one, running from God is a waste of time. Running from God is a waste of time. Point number two, disobedience has an unnecessary cost. Disobedience has an unnecessary cost. Point number three. Being in opposition of God can cause you and others to experience a storm. Y'all all all right with that? Being in opposition of God can cause you and others to experience a storm. And then point number four. God will hold all of us accountable for disobeying him. He'll hold us all all of us accountable for disobeying him. And then the final point, even when we fail, God is willing to give us another chance. The definition for second chances is simply an opportunity to try something again after we failed the first time. So when I say that God is a God of second chances, what I mean is is that it is in his nature to give us another opportunity when we may have failed the first time. And so today we want to uh, talk about a man named Jonah. Now, of course, Jonah is very familiar to most of us. I don't have to go into great detail into the story, but I do want us to turn our Bibles over to Jonah uh, chapter 1. Jonah chapter 1, and I I want us to uh, start over there with verse number 1, if you don't mind, Uh, just to kind of give those that uh, are not uh, familiar with it a chance to read or acquaint themselves with this story. Jonah chapter 1, I want us to look at verse uh, number 1. 
the word of God reads, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. Y'all see this? But Jonah rose up to flee unto where? Tarshish. From the presence of who? The Lord. And went down to where? Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish. So what did he do? He paid the fare thereof. And went down into it. To go with them unto Tarshish. From the presence of the Lord. But look at verse number four. But the Lord sent out what? A great wind into the sea. And there was what? A mighty tempest in the sea. So that the ship was like to be broken. In verse number five. Then the mariners were afraid. And cried every man unto his God. And cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea. To lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. I wanted us to read this to kind of reacquaint ourselves for most of us uh, with this story. And I also on the screen want to show you a map with the places involved in the story of Jonah. And for those of us who are in the sanctuary here today, I guess you're just going to have to use your imagination with this thing. I want us to uh, picture, if you will, uh, Jonah being in one city, the city of his birth named Gath Heifer. Gath Heifer. That was the city in which uh, Jonah was in. That's the city of his birth. And then, if you can Imagine then a city that is uh, uh, more further north of his birthplace, a city called Nineveh. That city called Nineveh is the place that God wanted him to go. Y'all still with me today? Uh, this city, Nineveh, that God wanted him to go to was the city, really, uh, the capital of Assyria. Uh, this was a city that was evil, uh, that was doing things contrary to the will and to the way of God. And God wanted Jonah to go to this city uh, to preach against it. Amen. Now, what we have to understand is if, if Jonah uh, left his hometown, Gath Heifer, and went up to Nineveh, he would have just been traveling some 500 miles. Y'all all right? 500 miles he would have been traveling. But we know that Jonah didn't do that, did he? He decided to go down to Joppa first. Added some miles there. But then he decided to get into a ship and to go to Tarshish, which is some 2,500 miles away, opposite of Nineveh. Y'all see this? All right, all right. You, you literally see it, don't you? <laughs> all right. Amen. Amen. I thought that map was very, very helpful. Amen. And so he traveled all the way to the other end of the Meter Mediterranean Sea to get away from God, to, to uh, avoid doing God's will. But all Jonah had to do was to follow God's instruction. And that would have saved him a whole lot of time and a whole lot of effort. But Jonah went to the opposite end of what God wanted him to do. And today, if you are living a life that is contrary to the word and to the will of God, you're on the opposite end of where God wants you to be. But what you need to know is that God is a God of second chances. As a matter of fact, we all have lived on the opposite end of where we needed to be. But God gave us all a second chance in life. And you who are watching, you need to know that 
Uh, even in your own life, when God gave you that second chance, he expected you to do something with it. He didn't just expect for you to just be living and not praising him. He didn't expect for you to just exist and not tell somebody else about his goodness. But he expected you to give him praise, to tell others about his goodness, and to lift him up so that others can be drawn unto him. And so God, when he gives us that second chance, he wants us to do something with it. I want us to turn over to Ephesians chapter 2 real quick. Ephesians chapter 2. I want us to look at this in Ephesians chapter 2 because it basically tells us uh, that we all uh, had uh, our, our, our issues in life that God has saved us from. And he's had pity on all of us. In Ephesians chapter 2, starting with verse number 1, look at what Paul says to the church at Ephesus. And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. It says, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. You used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us, y'all see verse number three? All of us used to live that way. Can you say that today? All of us, amen. Somebody just say all of us, amen. Uh, that includes everybody. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate uh, passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. But our very nature, but our, our, or by our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. But God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that, we, that you have been saved. Can you say amen to that? Amen. It's just by God's grace. Not because uh, we became so good, but because of his mercy and his grace. Now going back to uh, our lesson in, in Jonah uh, chapter 1. And going back to uh, verse number 3 there. We can see here that uh, Jonah paid uh, to get into this ship in order to go to Tarshish. And Jonah spent this, this money that he really didn't have to spend uh, if he had only obeyed God in the first place. And today we, we see folks that are paying out money that they don't have to spend at all. We see folks paying for divorces that they don't have to get at all. We see some folks that are, are paying for operations to be another gender, amen, somebody, that they don't have to pay for at all. We see folks paying for drugs just so that they can have, uh, they believe, relief from their situations instead of just casting their cares upon God, amen. understanding God cares for them. We got folks that are paying out money that don't need to be paying out money at all. But there is a cost for sin that no one, no one could pay except for Christ. And no one should want to pay a price that would cause us to be eternally separated from God. But I'm so glad that God is a God of second chances and he offers us eternal life. Romans chapter 6 and verse number 23 says this. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm so glad for the gift of eternal life Amen. through Jesus Christ. When we go back to our story in Jonah, uh, Jonah chapter 1. We can see here uh, that Jonah... Uh, became in opposition to God. And that caused others to be 
in the storm with Jonah. You know, sometimes we can just get in some mess and we pull others into our mess. Amen, somebody. Uh, 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 whether it's intentional or not, we draw others into our mess. I can remember so many occasions where uh, when I was on the police department, I would get calls to family troubles, family disturbances. And sometimes the crux of the problems in those disturbances would be a family member stealing money from their mother or grandmother in order to buy drugs. Y'all see this? Uh, 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 when you uh, have gone out and you have explored uh, using drugs, you didn't necessarily expect drugs to just grab you and possess you. But because people have uh, uh, messed around with drugs, drugs then grab them and possess them. But not only that, drugs cause them to pull other people into their mess. Amen. And how did they do it? By stealing from others, amen. By uh, coercing others to steal for them. And, and, and so what we have to understand is, is that uh, we can draw other people into our mess. And so we got to be very, very careful. But here we see uh, in uh, verse number four, because Jonah had decided to disobey God uh, and go to the opposite end of where God wanted him to be. God caused a storm to happen in his life. And not only in his life, but those who were with him also experienced that same storm. And if we're not careful, we can be just as disobedient. And God can cause a storm in our lives, which will pull others into that storm as well. I got an example of this. Some of you may recall the story of Achan. Y'all remember Achan in the Bible? Some do, some don't. Well, Achan was a man that was disobedient to what God has said. Some of you remember when Joshua uh, was the leader of the uh, Is Israelite army, and uh, they were going to fight Ai, and God had commanded them, don't take of anything uh, uh, of the accursed. He wanted them to, to destroy everything. But Achan, Achan thought that uh, nobody was looking at him. And uh, when nobody was looking at him, he, he saw some garments. He saw some clothing uh, that he wanted to take. I don't know if he saw an Amarni suit or what he had. You know, he could have saw some Stacey Adams in the closet of somebody and wanted to just go ahead. And, I don't know exactly what he took is what I'm telling you. Uh, but he took some garments. Amen. And he also took some clothing. And what he did was, uh, when he got back to his crib, amen, which was a tent, he dug a hole in the middle of his tent and put these things in him. As if he could totally conceal them even from the presence of God. But God knew about it. And God called him out on it. And rest assured that God will call us out on our mess as well. Amen. There's nothing that we can hide from God. God informed Joshua. Joshua called all the people together, and here come Achan. Joshua said, Achan, tell me, man, what did you do? And he came clean with it. I stole some garments. I stole some money. What was the result of this? Death. Death. Amen. What ended up happening is, not only did he die, but his wife and his children and all his cattle, they brought all of them together and stoned them all and then burnt them up. Wasn't that something? God doesn't play. Just because God is a God of second chances, let's not get it twisted. We don't want to play with him because our grace can run out. And it doesn't mean that, that we're entitled to a second chance just because he's a God of second chances. We got to understand that if we're living in sin now, we might die in our sin. And this is why I'm encouraging you this morning to change your mind. Change your mind. Turn away from the sin and turn back to God. Amen. We never want to take his grace for granted. In Romans chapter 6 and verses 1 and 2, the Bible says there, uh, Paul uh, talking to the church in Rome, he says, what shall we say then? 
Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. He says, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? You know, for us today, God has cleaned us up from sin. So why should we return back to that sin that had a hold on us so tight? Paul is saying, God forbid. Don't do it. Don't turn back to it. Keep going forward in the Lord. When we go back to our storyline in Jonah chapter 1, when we drop down to uh, verses 12 through 15, we can see here that God holds Jonah accountable. In verse number 12, uh, we can see again that Jonah comes up with his own remedy. Uh, he came up with the remedy to, to throw him overboard. Uh, let me just say this, uh, especially to the brothers. If we ever find ourselves on the same boat together, uh, I'm never going to say to you, uh, throw me overboard. <laughs> Amen. I, I, I'm never, I don't care what the situation, I'm never going to say to you, throw me overboard. Now I'm saying to the rest of the people, sisters especially, as my witness today, if you ever read something or see it on TV, that Brother Phil was, was in the water uh, with the brothers, you know that it wasn't my will to be thrown overboard. Amen, somebody. <laughs> Amen. I'm saying it now. Amen. But he said, throw me overboard. Just thinking uh, trying to come up with solutions by himself instead of just going to God instead of saying God I messed up I'm in this situation can you help me out of the mess that I got in instead of doing that he came up with his own remedy throw me overboard and then in verse number 13 we can see that the man tried to row harder to get to land. In other words, they didn't want to kill this man. They didn't want that blood to be on their hands. So they tried to row harder to get him to shore, but they couldn't. Why? Because God had caused a storm that they could not defeat in their lives. And I'm here to tell you, when God causes a storm, you can't defeat it. You can't get around it. You can't get out of it because that storm was meant to stop you right where you are Amen. and that storm is meant for you to acknowledge God yes. in your current condition yes. not to wait till things get over but to uh, acknowledge him right where you are and then in verse number 14 we see that the men finally followed the advice of Jonah and threw him overboard because they couldn't go any further. But then when you drop down to verse number 17, you can see there uh, that God stops Jonah uh, in his tracks. And we see and we know that he prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, didn't he? Right. Jonah stayed uh, in the belly of this fish for three days and three nights. And of course, uh, deep in this uh, See jail cell. Amen. Uh, he started to contemplate his life. He started to think over the things that he had done. And, and, and God will uh, cause storms in our life. God will cause us to go on pause just to think about those things that we have done that was contrary to the will of God in our lives. And what he wants us to do is he wants us to have a mindset of repentance. And so God was holding him accountable at this particular point. He wanted him to recall some things that he had done. And so when we look at Jonah uh, chapter 2, we can see that Jonah, in fact, used this time to start praying to God. In Jonah chapter 2 and, and verse number 1, we can see that uh, this was the time that Jonah prayed out of the belly of the fish. He didn't wait to get out. Amen. He started praying right where he was. And this is an example for us today. We don't wait to get out of a situation for God uh, to, to, to pray to God for God's help. We pray for God's help while we are going through. Amen. And then, of course, notice uh, that uh, Jonah need, needed to... Uh, Get back in line with God's will. 
And so when we look at Jonah uh, chapter 2, God provided a means for Jonah to get back in line with his will. The Lord spoke to the fish. And the fish vomited him out. Ooh, isn't that nasty? That's just, just a nasty thought, isn't it? Uh, uh, just, just spit them out. Uh, and you can just imagine that Jonah came on out with everything else uh, that the fish digested. Isn't that just a nasty thought? And he had to uh, get out and just shake all that stuff off of him. Uh, but here's the thing. The Bible says that uh, he spoke to the fish. And that meant that the Lord was in control of that situation. And we got to understand that no matter what situation we find ourselves in, God is still in control of it. Uh, and then notice where the fish vomited him out at. On dry land. So what we need to know that uh, today is, is that when we pray and we, can, we repent of our sins, having a mindset change, God can restore us back to the place to where we started before we started to flee from him. God is just that good. God put Jonah back on dry land, the place in which he refused to obey God, but God is giving him a second chance. In Jonah chapter 3 in our scripture reading, uh, let's look at that real quick. So when we go here, we can see uh, that the Lord again spoke to Jonah. He told him to, to go and to preach against Nineveh. And the Bible says that uh, Nineveh uh, was a three days journey from where he was. Now, we don't really know exactly where he was when the uh, fish vomited him out. But he was three days journey from Nineveh. But he made it in one day. One day. I don't know if he was working out with Sergeant Major over here to, to, to run that uh, so quickly. I, I don't know what he, what he did and what his regiment was, uh, but he was mighty fast if he could make a three-day journey in one. But that just uh, goes to tell you uh, how much uh, that he appreciated uh, his second chance. It, it told you how much that he was motivated by God giving him uh, this second chance. And he was going to go ahead and take full advantage of this second chance. And so we got to understand that no matter what we have done, if God has given us a check, second chance, we got to take full advantage of it. And it doesn't matter how unworthy you think uh, that you are. It doesn't matter uh, if you've been disobedient to him. It doesn't matter uh, what distance you have grown from him. We all need to pray to God and ask him to forgive us for our sins and hurry up and get back on the path of righteousness. You know, Jonah initially failed his first opportunity at obeying God. But we thank God that he is the God of second chances. Amen. And what we want you to know today is, is that no matter what you've done, God is still the God of second chances. Yes, if you're not in Christ, we want to tell you how to get in Christ. First of all, you need to hear the word of God according to Romans 10, 17. You need to believe the word according to Mark 16 and 16. What in particular do you need to hear? The gospel of Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth shall not be, uh, perish but have everlasting life. You need to believe that. Amen. And then you need to repent of your sins according to Luke 13 and 3. And then you need to make the confession of your faith that I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then you need to be obedient and go into the watery grave of baptism there, having your sins washed away there, arising a new creature in the Lord, according to Acts 2 and 38. Then the Lord adds you to his church, according to Acts 2 and 47. And then the expectation is that the Lord expects you to live faithful unto death, according to Revelations 2 and verse number 10. And then he promises in that same verse that you will receive a crown of life. If it is your desire to give your life over to the Lord today, and you're watching this live, you can simply call this number, area code 
1-800-242-0401. And we'll answer the phone. And we'll be able to give you instructions as to how you can be baptized into Christ today. Uh, if you're watching this and this is a recording, uh, you can call those numbers on the screen. And we will uh, answer the phone. And we'll be able to instruct you as to how you can be baptized. Of course, if you're going through something, you can always call us when we want to pray for you and pray with you. But just know that Hampton Church of Christ is praying for everybody and that you all matter. May God continue to bless you and keep you. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you. Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Each victory will help you, some others to win. Five men fully on, word dark, passion subdued. Look ever to Jesus, and Jesus will carry you through. Oh, why don't you ask the Savior to help? Yes, comfort, strengthen, and keep you. Oh, he is willing to aid you. Oh, and Jesus will carry you through let the church say amen. Amen. amen what a powerful lesson this morning our god is a god of second chances if you are here in the sanctuary we ask that you stand at this time as we bow our heads in reverence as we go before the throne of grace let us together pray Gently Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to once again just lift up your name and exalt you and say thank you, Lord. Thank you for delivering us through our weeks, Gently Father, where Satan was busy in our lives, Gently Father. Some of us were met with challenges, Gently Father. Some of us were afflicted with pain, Gently Father. Some of us have gone through bereavements, Gently Father. Some of us, Gently Father, are dealing with challenges on our job. And Lord, you have brought us through, Lord, this week, so we say thank you. We honor you, Gently Father, and we love you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing us to endure this. But Lord, if we're transparent before you, we need a little extra strength, Heavenly Father, especially this week, Lord. We know Satan gets busy in our lives, Lord, so we're just praying that you give us strength to overcome obstacles and challenges that Satan throws our way, Heavenly Father. We're asking for additional patience, Heavenly Father, Lord, with uh, those in our lives, Lord, our loved ones, our family members, the people on our job, Lord, continue to fill our hearts with love, Heavenly Father, where we are lacking. And dear Lord, please forgive us for the sins that we have committed before you, Heavenly Father, the things we've done knowingly and the things we've done unknowingly. Heavenly Father, some of us are in times of transition, uh, times where we're looking for looking for job opportunities, Heavenly Father. We're just praying, Lord, that you please open the doors for us, Lord. Lord, as we seek you, Heavenly Father, we're just praying that, that you uh, reveal yourself, Heavenly Father, to us. Lord, fill us with comfort, Heavenly Father. Lord, we're, we're sad, Heavenly Father. Give us your Holy Spirit of comfort and peace. And dear God, continue to bless us, Heavenly Father, as children of you, Lord, as we go out of this sanctuary, as we leave your place, Lord, but never from your presence. Lord, allow us to be that light, Heavenly Father, for you. Heavenly Father, allow us to be that beacon of light, Lord, that when people look at us, they know that we belong to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And if you have joined us, we ask that you please like, share, and subscribe.